Hi. As you might be aware, whenever you talk of computational intelligence, computational intelligence is nothing but it mimics the human brain. So you make your system, the computer, to mimic the human brain, then that what constitutes CI, the computational intelligence, and in turn artificial intelligence. So to better understand those concepts, I thought I would give you an overview of the human brain, how it works, what is it made up of, and so on. So the first thing is the CNS, the central nervous system. The central nervous system is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. The elaboration of the anterior portion of the CNS is called cephalization. So increase in the number of neurons in the head, the highest level is reached in the human brain. So what is a human brain made up of? It is nothing but wrinkled pinkish grey tissue. So the surface anatomy includes the cerebral hemispheres, the cerebellum and the brain stem. Looking at the basic pattern of the central nervous system, you have the spinal cord. The spinal cord is the central cavity surrounded by grey matter core. External to it is the white matter that is composed of myelinated fiber tracts. Then we have the human brain. The human brain is similar to the spinal cord but it has additional areas of grey matter. The cerebellum has grey matter in the nuclei. The cerebrum has nuclei and additional grey matter in the cortex. If you look at the human brain structure, it is made up of cerebrum, the cerebellum, the brain stem. In addition, you have four different lobes, namely the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe. The occipital lobe basically is responsible for vision, eyesight, what you see. The parietal lobe is responsible for touch, pressure, temperature and pain. Yeah, if uh, somebody touches you, if it is very cold, then all these are coming from the parietal lobe. The temporal lobe is basically responsible for hearing and memory. If you have a memory loss, then there is some problem with the temporal lobe. The frontal lobe is basically responsible for reasoning, planning what you speak, movement, the emotion that you saw and how much of problem solving capacity that you have and all of these things is the basic job of the frontal lobe and all these four lobes are important for the effective functioning of the human brain. So if you look at the basic structure of the central nervous system so you have all the you know gray matter white matter and so on. So you have the region of the cerebellum, the brain stem, the spinal cord and each has its own you know gray matter, white matter and so on. There are some basic brain facts that are quite interesting that you would probably be interested to know. The messages to and from one side of the body are usually handled by the opposite side of the brain. So if for example the right side of your body is not functioning then automatically it implies there is some problem with your left side of the brain and vice versa. The folded crumpled structure that you see on the cerebrum 
it contains large amount of small and large grooves bulged with greatly increases its overall surface area so because of this kind of a design the surface area of the cerebral cortex is tripled and if it is laid flat would cover an area of about 3 square feet so it is also important to note that there are no pain receptors in the brain so the brain will actually feel no pain so probably it is the responsibility of the lobes to probably sense the pain and then you know send a signal if somebody for instance pricks you and so on so there are about 1 lakh miles of blood vessels in the brain itself you know just remember 1 lakh miles of blood vessels and about a hundred billion neurons or what we call it as the nerve cells so each neuron basically has about thousand and ten thousand synapses synapses is nothing but a connection with other neurons so like that you have about hundred billion neurons so as we age definitely the neurons will die so for most areas of the brain we do not seem to make new neurons after birth but in some cases you know it might make new neurons so the fattest organ in the human body is the human brain it contains about 60 percent fat so when you are awake the brain generates sometime somewhere between 10 and 23 watts of power or energy and that power should obviously be enough to light a bulb and as per research humans experience about 70,000 thoughts each day then children learn two languages before the age of five after their brain structure to have much denser gray matter as adults and uh, if a child basically learns about two languages before the age of five you know then that's a good sign and you know it has much denser gray matter as adults and as we age obviously our brain will lose the mass if you look at the general organization of the brain you have the brain stem then the diencephalon, the cerebrum, and the cerebellum. The brain stem consists of the medulla obligata, the pons, and the midbrain. The diencephalon contains the thalamus and the hypothalamus. Then you have the cerebrum and the cerebellum, and each one does a very specific activity, and it is important that every part in the brain is equally important if you look into the cerebral cortex the cortex is the nothing but the superficial gray matter and it basically consists of about 40 percent of the mass of the brain so this cerebral cortex is responsible for sensation communication memory understanding and voluntary movements the hemispheres are not equal in function so no functional area will act alone and the conscious behavior will involve the entire cortex if you look at the functional areas of the cerebral cortex there are three types of functional areas the first one is the motor area which we call it as the control voluntary movements then you have the sensory areas which is responsible for conscious awareness of the sensation then you have association areas that integrate diverse information the cerebral cortex which is responsible for the motor areas so you have something called the primary motor cortex the pre-motor cortex the frontal eye field and the Broca's area the medulla oblongata is the most inferior part of the brain stem. It has two major tracks. The one is called the pyramid 
which consists of basically two longitudinal ridges and the other one is degussation of the pyramids, crossover points to other side of the spinal cord for the corticospinal tract. Then you have the thalamus. The thalamus is nothing but a paired egg-shaped mass that forms the superolateral walls of the third ventricle. It contains four groups of nuclei, the anterior, the ventral, the dorsal and the posterior. All inputs ascending to the cerebral cortex will pass through the thalamus and the thalamus very clearly plays a dominant role in motor activities learning and memory. So this is how a thalamus looks like. The dorsal nuclei, the anterior, the reticular, the ventral nuclei and so on. The hypothalamus is located just below the thalamus and it caps the brain stem and it forms an inferolateral wall of the third ventricle. And you have something called the infundibulum, which connects to the pituitary gland. What is the basic function of the hypothalamus? The hypothalamic function is very important for your body. This hypothalamus is responsible for regulating the blood pressure in your body. This hypothalamus will basically look at your heartbeat, the rate, the force. It also looks at your digestive tract, then the rate and depth of your breathing and many other visceral activities are basically controlled by the hypothalamus. And hypothalamus is also involved with the person of perception of the pleasure, the fear, the rage and so on. This hypothalamus is very important because this will have a control mechanism that will regulate and maintain your body temperature. This hypothalamus will trigger you whenever you feel hungry. The hypothalamus will probably regulate your sleep cycle and how well you sleep will basically depend on the hypothalamus. So most of the activities in your body are basically controlled by the hypothalamus. Then you have the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest division of the brain. It has two hemispheres and each of it is basically divided into four lobes. Yeah, so the cerebrum is the biggest one. So it makes up about 80% of our brain. Then you have the cerebellum. The cerebellum is located dorsi to the pons and the medulla. It protrudes under the occipital lobes of the cerebrum. And this cerebellum probably makes about 11% of the brain's mass. So this cerebellum is important because you know this will only probably regulate your skeletal muscle contraction. This will control the precise timing, the pattern of your skeletal muscle contraction. And this activity is subconscious, yeah? So the cerebellar activity is totally subconscious. Then when you look at the cerebellar processing, so it will obviously receive some kind of impulses to initiate voluntary muscle contraction. So, the cerebellar cortex calculates the best way to perform a movement. Yeah, so whenever you have voluntary muscle contraction, you will be able to move. So a blueprint of this movement is basically sent to the cerebral motor cortex. And this motor cortex will obviously make the person to walk, run, jump and so on. So cerebellar processing is very, very important which basically occurs subconsciously and is solely responsible for any kind of, you know, motor activity by a person will be taken care of and addressed by the cerebellar processing unit. So this has given you a 
quick overview of our human brain, some interesting facts about our human brain and how much of neurons are there in the human brain, the parts of the brain and the basic functions of the human brain and so on. So stay tuned for more lectures. Thank you.